Welcome. In this video, we will use the power factor to examine how the power factor of a load affects voltages and currents in a simple circuit. The simple circuit that we have is um, up here on the screen, and it actually has a somewhat useful uh, interpretation. If I think of everything to the left of these two terminals that I've just drawn, as a utility company that's supplying uh, power to my load and then I think of my load as my load that is drawing power from the utility company, we can get an, uh, an understanding of why utility companies like loads with power factors that are close to one. This point 0.2 resistor models, or point 0.2 ohm resistor, models the resistance that you would see in the wire that a power company uses to uh, get the energy from wherever it generates the power to uh, wherever you use it. So what we're going to look at, in fact, is the power dissipated in this 0.2 ohm resistor as a function of the power factor of this load. Okay. Now, the information that will be given is one that the load, the magnitude of the voltage for the load is going to be 170 volts. This is peak uh, value. Okay. And um, this corresponds to an average uh, or an effective value, RMS value of 120 volts. Okay. Um, we're also going to be told that um, the actual power, the actual average power of our load, we want to be 5 kilowatts. So the power company needs to deliver 5 kilowatts on average to, to my load here. And we'll use the definition of the average power, which is that it's 1 half times the peak to peak or the peak voltage on the or the peak voltage times the peak current times the cosine of theta minus phi where theta is the phase angle of the voltage and phi is the phase angle of the current so basically this is the cosine of the difference in phases between the voltage and the current and this whole cosine of the phase differences is the power factor, which we denote as PF. Okay, so another way of writing this would be one half VL IL PF. And we'll use this expression to solve for currents that our load will require for different power factors, and then we'll, um, we'll use that current uh, to determine how much power would be dissipated in the 0.2 ohm resistor. Okay, so let's start by assuming that we have a power factor of 1. Sometimes authors will get fancy and call this a power factor of unity. Um, sounds sort of like there's some karma involved there. And it turns out power factors of 1 are the best kinds of power factors to have. Okay, so if I assume I have a power factor of 1, my load is going to require 5 kilowatts of power be delivered to it. That's P. And this will be 1 half times 170 volts. That's my magnitude of my voltage. Times IL, which I don't know yet, times a power factor of unity. I can solve this for IL. I get IL is 5 kilowatts over 1 half times 170 volts. Okay, and if I work this out, you have to remember 5 kilowatts is 5,000 watts. Um, I've seen students uh, mess that up quite a bit. So you've got 5,000 divided by 1 half times 170. And if I've worked this out correctly, 
this is 5 or 58.8 amps okay so that says with a power factor of 1 I need to have 58.8 amps flowing through my load with a voltage across it of 170 volts to get my 5 kilowatts okay if I have 58.8 amps this is again as a peak value uh, flowing through my 0.2 ohm resistor then the power in the 0.2 ohm resistor this is the power that's dissipated by the line that the power company uses to get the power to you would be one half I L squared times 0.2 ohms okay uh, I L again is the peak volt or the peak current and because this is a uh, the peak current in a sinusoid uh, the average uh, the average uh, power is given by one half I L squared times the resistance which is in this case 345.7 watts okay so um, well, power factor of 1 the power in our 0.2 ohm resistor is 345.7 watts okay so far so good let's see what happens if we have a power factor of point 0.7 okay so with a power factor of point 0.7 again I need 5,000 kilowatts or I'm sorry 5 kilowatts 5,000 kilowatts would be a lot of watts 5 kilowatts delivered to my load and this will be one half times the peak voltage times the peak current times the power factor which in this case is 0.7 uh, the peak voltage here is 170 again so I can say then that the peak current is going to be um, 5 kilowatts over one half times 170 times 0.7 and this works out to be 84.0 amps so you can see that if my power factor is less than one it takes a higher peak current to get the same average power uh, to the load um, this from the point of view of the utility company is bad if we look at the power dissipated in the 0.2 ohm resistor this is going to be one half times the uh, peak current squared times 0.2 ohms and for those of you that are wondering where this expression comes from it just occurs to me uh, we haven't really uh, derived it in any of the videos so I'll come back and show you why that's the case once we've done this example and when I compute this I get 705.6 watts so with a power factor of 0.7 our power in the 2 ohm uh, resistor is 705.6 watts it's almost double uh, what our power is for a power factor of 1 so again if you think about it if you're the power company and your job is to deliver 5,000 watts to the load um, you have to generate more electricity with a power factor of 0.7 than you do with a power factor of 1 because some of your power is going to be lost or more of your power is going to be lost in transmission so this is why utility companies really 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 like to have power factors close to 1 okay so one thing that I just assumed was clear and I probably ought to make sure it actually is clear that the average power in this 0.2 ohm resistor 
is given by this expression. So let's clear that up to make sure. So let's think about, in fact, we can generalize this to an arbitrary resistor. So the power in a resistor is going to be one half times the peak voltage across it times the peak current through it times the power factor of the resistor. Okay, so in this particular case we're talking about a power factor of a resistor and not the power factor of the load. We've already considered the power factor of the load. Okay, the power factor of a resistor is always one. Okay, because in a resistor the voltage across it and the current through it are always in phase. That's one of the nice things about resistors. And so if the voltage and current are in phase, the phase difference between them is zero, the power factor is the cosine of that phase difference, which is one. Now, um, we can also apply Ohm's law and say that the peak uh, voltage is going to be the current times the resistance. And so if we plug this in now, we get P is one half I L R I L times the power factor of one, so we'll just ignore it. So it's one half I L squared R, which is this expression that we used twice in solving this problem. Okay. This is almost the same as the power in a resistor when you're looking at DC circuits, except we have this factor of one-half. The factor of one-half compensates for the fact that the I sub L we're talking about is the peak value of the current. And uh, when we square, uh, and the current is sinusoidal. So um, the current goes from I L to minus I L to pl plus I L and so on. When we square that current and find the average, uh, we get half of the peak value. So that's where that comes from. We can use a similar approach to say that the uh, peak power is one half times, or I'm sorry, the average power is one half times the peak voltage squared over the resistance. So again, it looks like the power relationships you're used to from DC circuits, but you've got this one half here. And uh, in another video, we'll talk about the idea of effective or RMS voltage that's been defined in such a way that you don't have to worry about the halves. So that concludes this video.